Our next speaker is a liver transplant recipient. He is grateful every day for his donor and the support of his family before, during, and after his transplant. He now works for Unbound, an international nonprofit based in Kansas City. They focus on the needs of the marginalized and the vulnerable. Because of the organ donor who saved Ramiro's life, he now travels the world. Please welcome Ramiro. Good morning. I wanted to extend my sincere gratitude um, to all of you for attending this event and for letting me share my story and the power of <coughs> faith and the generosity of others that made my life what it is right now. Um, I was born in Guatemala and came to the United States 41 years ago. Uh, like many people in this country, I was living the American dream. Everything that was going well. I got a house, I got a college degree. I thought I was invincible. Um, until one day, after years of complaining about abdominal pain, nausea, and other symptoms, with the advice of my primary care doctor, um, I decided to visit a hepatologist, which is um, a liver doctor. And um, that's when the story begins. Um, after the initial consultation, and a multiple, multitude of tests, uh, the cardiologist, Dr. Smith, may he rest in peace, um, asked me to come to his office, and he said that I have what they call cryptogenic cirrhosis. That is when they don't know what, what caused. It was not alcohol. Most likely it was a fatty liver, but they couldn't say that for sure. Um, and, um, and that, um, Unless I have a liver transplant, I only have 11 to 12 months to live. Um, however, uh, he said, and this is, I always keep it on my memory, however, if you trust in my medical advice and follow all of the instructions <coughs> that he was uh, going to help me to fight uh, for my life on the darkest uh, moments also of my life. And at the end, we were going to celebrate, him and I. <clears throat> he gave me and my family a, a hug and started to give me advice on all of the things that I needed to know uh, and to be prepared uh, to fight for my life. Uh, it was not until that moment that I real realized about my mortality. <clears throat> What's going to happen to my family if I die? Fortunately, I had a lot of support from my family and friends I got closer to God, and I was blessed by finding the help and support of the gift of life. Um, they provided people like, or they provide people like me who were waiting for a transplant uh, hope. Uh, and um, uh, it is so reassuring to see people who are going through the same or we're going through the same things that I was going, uh, how these uh, people survive transplants. And at the same time, uh, uh, I learned about the great things that the gift of life uh, does on a day-to-day -day basis. And this was uh, very precious for me and my family. Two months after the first um, um, diagnosis of cirrhosis of the liver, the Dr. Smith called me to his office and told me that my health was getting worse. Now I needed to be admitted in, into the organ transplant list. Um, and he also told me that if I had a bucket list to start to work on it right now. As an immigrant, I had no idea what the bucket, your bucket list was. <laughs> so I, 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 had to, I had to find that out. <clears throat> Once, uh, <clears throat> after a couple of weeks, of test, more and more tests and appointments, I was admitted into the University of Nebraska Medical Center uh, organ transplant waiting list. Uh, once again, Dr. Smith told me, asked me to come again, and, and he told me that I was getting sicker and that if I didn't have a transplant, I only had 10 days to live. But there was a procedure, and I cannot remember the name, uh, that uh, could prolong uh, my, my life for a couple of months 
but the chances of, uh, of uh, success was 50%. So I had to take the risk and I took it and I was ready to, to have that procedure. On the night before that procedure, a deacon from the Prince of Peace Parish in Olathe came to my house to give me the sacrament of the sick. And he asked me if I was mad or angry at God, to which I said no. How could I be angry at God when I have such a beautiful life? As an immigrant, I had the opportunity to live the American dream. I had a beautiful family. If anything, I should be thankful uh, to God for the opportunity that he has given me. The deacon prayed, gave me communion, and left. After he left, I, sensed, I felt a sense of peace and happiness after the ceremony. But the most amazing thing is that two hours after I got the communion, I received a call from Nebraska Medical Center telling me that there was a liver waiting for me and that I needed to get in less than two hours to, to the hospital. Um, and then the rest is history. Uh, I, I was blessed uh, with a second chance to live uh, and, 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 and to take advantage of all of the beautiful things that on occasions when we are healthy, and young, we don't see or notice. Um, I do not know who my organ donor was, but one day when I was in Nebraska Medical Center, I got the, the chart and I read that it was a lady um, who was 65 years old who died of um, aneurysm. <clears throat> and, and I don't know her name, but I call her my angel. Uh, and she's always in my prayers and in my heart. And when I got the opportunity to travel, I, I tell Angel, let's go somewhere. <laughs> um, I'm very grateful uh, for this Angel. Um, I have been blessed to work at a place where we help children, youth, and elders uh, from developing countries. And on some occasions, uh, I have um, traveled around the world to share the story of hope. Uh, this is, transplant uh, need is all over the world, and on occasions, there are places where they don't even have transplants on, on that country. <laughs> now, uh, for those of you who speak Spanish, I want to share something. It's really hard to translate, so I'm not going to translate it, but eh, me gustaría compartir una frase que dice, es tu reacción a la adversidad. Remember, recuerden, es tu reacción a la adversidad, no la adversidad en sí misma, la que determina cómo se desarrollará la historia de tu vida. Media vez tengamos fe, determinación y optimismo, cualquier problema que la vida nos da, lo vamos a poder afrontar con fortaleza y paciencia. Recuerden que los problemas no son eternos y las heridas se curan. Y al final, nuestra familia y amigos nos, nos ayudarán a salir de la oscuridad hacia la luz. Um, I want to take advantage of this opportunity to, to thank Kim. Uh, Kim is somewhere there. Right here. Oh, Kim. <laughs> and, and, and his family, his beautiful family, they are an inspiration. Uh, um, they, you guys have no idea, and every, all the staff from the Gift of Life, you guys have no idea how much we appreciate your help. Uh, my kids, who are older now, uh, 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 on occasions we, we, we think about uh, those difficult times, and um, uh, I remember when you guys came to my house uh, 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 and, and were so helpful. And, and for that, I want to thank you guys. We keep you in our hearts. Um, my, my transplant experience is an, an example of the generosity of others. And, um, that is, a, is an example that the generosity of others is priceless. And I learned so many things about life, death, the future, family, and friends. I want to encourage everybody in this audience eh, not to look too hard on yourselves. Give yourself a break. It's OK to make, to make mistakes. But learn from those mistakes. Tell the people that you love that you love them I love you often because you don't know if there's going to be a next time. 
So it's better that uh, all the loved ones know that you love them, because I know you love them. Give them a hug. And uh, most important, please believe in yourselves. To, to conclude, I'm going to end with a quote from Lady Gaga. <laughs> and, and, and that is, do not allow people to dim your shine because they're blinded. Tell them to put some sunglasses on. Yeah. You guys are awesome. Thank you. Yeah.